Previously, we had spoken about the importance of equal variances. Now, let's understand why that's important. On the right, we have a normal distribution curve. We actually have two. They both have an identical mean of 88.7. However, their standard deviations are different. The blue curve has a standard deviation of two, it means the variance is four, and the orange has a standard deviation of four, which means its variance is 16. You can see that the two shapes are very, very different. In fact, you can see that the probability of having a value in the area between the orange and the blue is fairly significant. So there's going to be a chance that we could be off if we just did normal tests and treated them as though they were the same population when the two curves show that they're very different. So equal variances, or at least close to it, are very important, and we need to test for them. So the question is, how do we do that? Well, it should be fairly intuitive that if the variances were equal to each other or close, then we could actually take the variance of each one and put them as in one as a numerator, the other as a denominator, if they were very close or equal, you would get one. Now, since we don't have population variances, we don't know the exact population uh, variance of the two curves, we could only use the sample variances. But again, the same holds. We could take the first sample variance, divide it by the second sample variance, and it should be equal to one. Now, statistically, this is shown to be distributed a along another type of distribution called an F distribution. So we're introducing a new distribution. But we're going to use the same procedures as we had in the past. We're going to, in this case, instead of calculating a T statistic, we're going to calculate an F statistic. And we're going to find the P value. And if the P value is less than the confidence level, we're going to reject the null hypothesis that the variances are equal. So our null hypothesis is set up that the variances are equal. So here's an example. Let's assume that we have two variances from the two sample scores that we had before. We can create a ratio of the two to compute our F statistic and then conduct our test. On the left, we have our variance from sample one is 85.21 and our variance from sample two is 66.95. Both observations are 30. Uh, both sets of observations are 30. We set up our null hypothesis that the two variances are equal to each other. Our alternative hypothesis is that they're not equal to each other. So we calculate our F statistic as a simple ratio or fraction, 85.21 divided by 66.95. And our F statistic is 1.273. We will then use the function in Excel called FDIST. And FDIST works, again, the same way. It basically will give us the area under the curve to the left using an F distribution. We put in the number 1.273, but now we have to put in two sets of degrees of freedom. One is called, it's actually called the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom. So basically the numerator degrees of freedom is going to be uh, 29 because it's n minus one for the top and the denominator degrees of freedom will be 29, which is n minus one degrees of freedom for the bottom. We do a true and we end up with 0.739. Since 0.739 is greater than 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and we can bear, therefore state that the sample variances are equal.